Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I'm going to do another training game that involves this idea of target consciousness while improving your position. Part of the interreaction of target consciousness with improving your position is finding the weak squares, weak pawns, etc. in your opponent's position. And that's always helpful to do because those become targets. In the process of attacking your opponent's weak points, we can automatically improve our own position, which is really sincerely valuable, right? It just makes uh, for stronger chess. C takes the d5 here. No surprise. E takes the d5 here. No surprise. So the knights are hitting the pawn, and the knight is supporting the pawn with the queen, of course, so not likely to be in too big a danger. So he develops a piece, hitting the bishop, or hitting the knight, pinning it to the queen. I've always liked to put the bishop up to take care of that issue, which makes the game easier for me at this point in my chess understanding. Uh, I know different grandmasters play this differently. I think through time I will be comfortable with either way. It's not a big deal at this point, but I'm going with what I know and what I'm more comfortable with. C5, target consciousness. Hit the center pawn deliberately. See, from here, there are so many options. I mean, we're in the opening, right? Uh, you could do this. And I'm not saying it's incorrect to do a developing move. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there are so many cotton-picking options. I mean, you can bring your queen up to here. Centralize your queen. Although... This early in the game, uh, not advisable. You know, it's best to keep her back a little bit. You could, you could easily come up to here and hit the queen. Although, you know, if you do a move like that, yeah, you're covered. But it's just going to further his ability to expand and gain space. Even though castling on the king side, that induces a little bit of a weakness. But it's not a bad, you know... So there's so much to do. So the principle with this pawn move is target consciousness. You do expand, get a little bit more space, hit the central pawn. Target consciousness, that's what I'm thinking, right? Well, D takes the pawn, which is not a crisis. And the knight hits the pawn. Target consciousness. Developing improving the ability to put my rooks together, have more pieces together for combinations, whether for defense or offense, target consciousness. B4, come up to support the pawn. So we recognize that once you target a target, if there's a way to strengthen that, then your opponent will do so. Well, yeah, you don't expect him to do otherwise, do you? No, I wouldn't. Knight e5. Again, another move while you're still not completely developed, and I kind of explained that a little bit in the previous video. I really have pushed for total development uh, and a more extended use of this is a complete use of all your pieces. Right? There's nothing really major coming down the pike against the king or against a queen, etc. So what this other move does is target consciousness. You're going to throw your opponent off kilter so that your opponent is responding to you. And now once more, target consciousness the backward pawn and i say backward pawn the pawn that is behind this pawn the supporting pawn is probably a more accurate way 
to say this. And now queen comes to b3. Now, that's not a bad developing move for white. And you say, well, your target consciousness may have inadvertently helped in his development. That's not inadvertent. It did help in his development. But practicing target consciousness as often as possible leads to good results for you in the long run. Sometimes in the short run, but so it's okay. D4. Central push, gaining more space, target consciousness. Right? Just showing you what can happen. Now, rook to d1 is a nifty little move, also helping the opponent develop because it pins the pawn to the queen. So, while you performed a target conscious movement, it helped him bring a rook in and give a good tactic. And so, what good did it do you? Well, that's what this game's all about. <laughs> I'm going to show you the good that it did. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, baby! I love it when that happens. Bishop f5, long good diagonal. Yes? Knight to b5, he's also being target conscious, and target conscious here. Yes? Bishop e6, target consciousness against the queen. Bishop to c4, supporting the queen, bringing his bishop out, hitting the bishop back. So, the swap of the bishops. Bishop takes c4. Sure, why not? And queen takes the c4. So, we are eliminated a couple of pieces. Now, queen to c8. And now e takes d4, good central power and influence by white at this point. Queen comes up to g4, superb, absolutely awesome target consciousness. Look at what this move accomplishes. Hitting the unsupported bishop hitting the supporting pawn in the pawn chain. Yes, it's supported. Yes, it's supported. So I'm not saying it's weak, but this one is. And hitting the G2 pawn. So that move is a power target conscious move, isn't it? That's what you can do with the queen. So bishop will now take the f6. Yes. Now, do we react to this? We can. However, you're being target conscious with the queen. What would be wrong with going ahead and getting yourself a rook and a pawn for a knight and a bishop, which, of course, you will get that bishop back anyway. Yeah? So the bishop takes... And in an order so that you don't lose a piece, rather than take the rook yet, that rook's not going to get away, right? You retake with this. Target conscious. Target conscious. Now, knight comes to c7. He's also being target conscious. The queen isn't hitting the b pawn. So your response can be target conscious back at you. Yeah, that's not bad. So the knight will come up to b5. And at this point, and, and see this, that the knight has a target also. Target conscious. And it will mess up this pawn side. This pawn side is already the minority, right? You got one, two, three, four. And they're all together on the queen side. So the queen side of white is looking really good for an end game, yeah? And now to know that, well, you've got another, you could go target conscious. That's a good move. There would be nothing wrong with that. However, there is something better. Take the 
take the rook. Target conscious. And now you have another target with the knight. Yeah? That makes sense, right? So the king comes over to f1 to give support to the knight. And now the rook up to c6. And you can see what you're going to do with that rook lift, can't you? One, you're keeping an eye at this point on the queen side, but your work is on the king side. The king didn't castle. He centralized still, so go attack that king. That's what's going to happen here. And that makes perfect good sense. In fact, White recognizes it, and he goes back. He says, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to bolster this eighth rank of mine because here comes the... Uh, here comes the discussion. Rook g6, target conscious, right to that knight. Backed by the queen. Seems like white, or black has a pretty good uh, gimmick going on here. King to e2, supporting it with both the rook and the, the queen, which is a good move. However, being target conscious, we are dissuaded from hitting the the knight with the rook, but what would be wrong with taking the target here and obliterate the king side? Nothing whatsoever that I can see, right? So that's awesome. Target consciousness. Knight comes to knight comes to takes the a7. The black is also or white is also target conscious of black's targets, and now we're whittling down the pieces, and you can see that the pawn majority is further moved here. So in an endgame, you want to just be cognizant of that and keep your eye on that, because that could be very dangerous if you start swapping out all the pieces. Yeah, that could be a tough row to hoe. And Rook comes to A. Six, target conscious, target conscious. That's a great little tactic. Very nice. By being target conscious here and forcing the king over to here, he couldn't protect that pawn and that knight together. So good target conscience. Knight to b5, of course, and then the rook takes a2 check from this side and now white's position is looking really shaky yeah king to d3 bumps up the king queen takes f2 target conscious he's closing in closer to the king he's taking targets as he took targets notice the queen by being target conscious got all three pawns and the rook. Completely wiped out the king's side. <clears throat> He's got a queen side and his king is being put out there into the center uh, a little early because he can really, really be attacked really easily, which is an unfortunate situation for white. Knight comes down here to c3 to try to give some support to the king and the queen comes to f Five check target conscious hitting the king the king is certainly a target so king comes up here to c4 among his pawns hoping to be shielded and now one of the better target conscious moves is you can't go to here with the queen because of the knight protecting that square yeah you're backed up but you can't do that, but you can go to here. Target conscious. Look how powerful that move is, how it strengthens your position of the attack against the king, how you pin a piece to the king, you're covered by the queen who is not threatened, and you're directly smacking the queen. That's a great target conscious move. If you're target conscious, it becomes easier to see these kind of moves, doesn't it? And notice who is having the initiative. He's putting his pieces right where he wants while white is reacting. That's wonderful stuff. Yeah? 
Queen comes to b1. Knight to d5. Target conscious. The, the knight is pinned, so the knight can't take the knight. And what do you do with the pinned piece? You attack it, because you'll win it. And man, if black can get the knight into there, look at the fork on the queen and the rook. That's a fantastic target conscious move. Yeah? That makes sense, right? So the knight comes here to e2 to give support to that knight. That is probably the best defensive move he can make at this point, at least so far as I can see. But you can see white's position is tenuous, can't you? Black has really got the charge of this. And now, queen h3 will apply even more pressure to the piece that's pinned. It's pinned and hit. It's hit by the knight. And now it's hit by the queen. That knight's going to fall. Yeah, you can see that. Very interesting. Target conscious. They keep hitting the target. Yes. Well, the rook is going to become target conscious, hitting the rook that's pinning the knight. That's a good move. Yes. So it appears that at this point, the rook could be in a little bit of trouble. I mean, he could take the rook and then lose the pin, but that might not be necessary. Uh, the queen is in good position, but we have a... The player who is target conscious will say, what is the best target to attack that is vulnerable? And that's the king. Yeah? And he's got another resource. The B pawn. Check. Hit the king, target conscious. And you say, well, all that does is it just gives him a pawn. That's not true. Let's see the effect. You go check. The king takes. And that's one less defender of the knight. Now the knight, instead of having three defenders, has only two. So that means that the knight is going to fall. But before he falls, queen target conscious for the best square check. Not harmed, but he definitely, she definitely checks. So king comes back up to a4, and now look at the fantastically target conscious fork that the knight, the knight is going to fall. It's hit three ways. It's only protected well, it's, yeah, it's, it's protected uh, twice. So it will fall. So the knight takes the knight. Check and look at that beautiful fork and the fork of the knight. So the knight can retake the knight. That makes sense. Yes, that makes beautiful sense. Knight will retake. And now the rook, the other rook, Target conscious, improving your position, using all your pieces, grabbing the open file, check. That's very nice. It doesn't matter if you don't use one of your pieces for 25 moves, if the other pieces are active in doing their job and improving your position, but it does matter to use all your pieces during the course of a game. Yeah? So there we have a fantastic check. And now king goes to b3, and now the queen has the checkmate. All because of the idea of the target conscious thinking with an improvement of a position. By adopting target consciousness, we put into use for our purposes the initiative, which will automatically lead to us improving our positions 
as the game goes by because we are making very strong threats and our opponent is reacting to those threats. So this is the great thing about target consciousness and improving your position and having the initiative. So there's your chess video. Be good, do well, have fun. Thanks. Have a splendiferous day. Uh, smile, remember, it's always awesome to smile at people. They'll smile back and you can't help but feel better during the day. That's the way it works. It's kind of cool that that works that way. And I will see you in the next chess video.